This is Roberta Foster, and welcome to today's edition of the Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO 91.7 FM, The Word. Today, I welcome Wally Long to Author's Corner. He has written the book, Why Me, Lord? Biblical and Practical Answers for Suffering in Our Lives. It's published by Westbow Press, a division of Thomas Nelson and Zondervan. And he'll tell you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. Just a little bit about Wally. He's a 10-year Marine veteran and retired federal correctional officer. He preached and taught God's Word for more than 25 years as a layman before becoming pastor of a church in his hometown of Mount Vernon, Missouri. In 2022, he graduated from Liberty University Summa Cum Laude with a bachelor's degree in biblical studies. Wally and his wife Sylvia have been married for more than 43 years. They have eight children and nine grandchildren. Welcome to Author's Corner, Wally. Thank you for having me, Roberta. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, it's good to have kind of a local, uh, since we're only about an hour away from yes, Mount right, Vernon. Right down the road, <laughs> right down the road, yep. And so um, your book is uh, dealing with the issue of suffering. So you were put through quite a traumatic situation in your life. So why don't you share with our listeners a, a brief summary of that? Yes, ma'am. Just briefly, I started in October of 2006 when I received a phone call from my brother telling me that my youngest sister had committed suicide. Uh, it kind of rocked our world because I had just spoken with her a few days before and then to find out that she was planning that suicide when I had spoken to her really shook me. But we got through that, and then later, about a year later, eight, nine months later, in July of 2007, my 18-year-old son at the time had a motorcycle accident and lost his right leg, nearly died, um, and we were in the hospital for a couple of weeks in Springfield, several surgeries. The day he came home from the hospital, I received another phone call, this one from my sister in Colorado, uh, telling me that my mother uh, was on her deathbed. She had gone to the hospital oh, and she was dying. So in a space of 11 months, I lost my sister, my mother, and almost my son. We, Our world was fairly well rocked at that point. Mostly I was very spent and drained. So I stopped preaching at the small church I was uh, a part of at the time mm -hmm. uh, and went on to another church just to relax and get away from anything anything having to do with thinking and leadership. So... Uh, and with the, our world started coming back together, and then on March 1st, 2011, I received another phone call, and this was from my oldest nephew of my, my brother. Uh, he told me that someone had broken into the home uh, and killed his mom and dad, my brother and his wife, and that the two youngest children, who were five and nine at the time, uh, were also injured and were being life-flighted to a mm. Children's Hospital in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, it was very devastating. So that's that's the the overview, a short overview of the series of tragedies that led me into asking this question for myself: Why me? Mm -hmm. Lord, why is all this happening to me? And I began to search the scripture for answers, and and that's where this book came from. Well, that's a lot of trauma uh, in your life in a very compact number of years, and so as you were uh, researching the issue of suffering in the scripture, uh, what did you find that helped comfort you? A, a number of things. I found that, for one, there are answers, <laughs> that the Bible has answers. Uh, that Actually, through my research and through my searching for answers for myself, the Lord gave me a sermon that I began to preach to other churches and, and groups uh, across the country, different places and venues. Uh, but there are num the, the fact that there are answers, uh, I think, gave me comfort. And the fact that, uh, well, God didn't intend for us to suffer, but we do now because we live in an imperfect world. Sin came into mm -hmm. the world, and so now we have suffering. Knowing that, which is part of life, I, I've known that my whole life, but finding it and seeking it in the Scriptures, having it come real to me, mm -hmm. uh, helped me a lot going through all that. And I think another thing that, that helped me a lot was when I discovered that it's not wrong to ask why, mm -hmm. when we're going through sufferings. I think, actually, God expects mm -hmm. us to, because when we're asking why, we are praying. And what better place is there to be than, than in a place of total confusion and, and loss in your life and saying, why me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Because then he can begin to speak to your heart. Yeah. And I think that was one thing that helped me a lot. 
Well, some people think that they shouldn't ask that question. Um, so I know. why do you? <laughs> sometimes I think it's about the attitude of the why, though, not so much the right. word, but what our attitude is when we ask the question. Right. I think you're right. Uh, I, I, one of the things that helped when I saw in the scriptures, in the Psalms, over and over and over again, the psalmist, pr- primarily David, he asks why a number of times. Mm-hmm. Even at one, point, at one point, he says, Lord, why are you sleeping? You know, why are you sleeping on the job? But his, his, the reason he asked the question, because of he was, in his deep distress, in the midst of his most difficult times, he just wanted to speak with the Lord and get a little bit of understanding about why things were happening to mm-hmm. him. It wasn't, it wasn't, I don't believe in you, Lord, because in every one of David's psalms, when he asked those questions, he comes back around saying, I trust you, mm-hmm. I have faith in you, I praise you. So the, the reason for the question was just in his human frailty. He wanted to know a little bit about what was going on and mm-hmm. why was this happening. What, is there some purpose behind what my suffering is? Uh, so I, I think I've been taught my whole life, don't ask God why. That shows a lack of faith. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I disagree. I think mm-hmm. to ask God why shows faith because you believe that God has the answers. Mm-hmm. And that's faith. I believe that God has the answers, and when we ask, I believe he begins to show them to us. Well, we'll find out more about some of the answers, perhaps, as we continue our talk with Wally Long in just a moment, reminding the listener that I'm talking to Wally about his book, Why Me, Lord? Biblical and Practical Answers for Suffering in Our Lives, published by Westbow Press, a division of Thomas Nelson and Zondervan. And you're listening to Author's Corner. I'm Roberta Foster. So um, some people might think that there's a step-by-step way of overcoming trauma and suffering, um, but your writing in this book indicates that it's different for each of us. Yes, it is, because we all all have different ways of responding to trauma and tragedy in our lives, and what may bounce off one person crushes another. Mm -hmm. It's the same same event. So we we can't compare, we, we can't necessarily contrast, because we're each on our own journey. Uh, so I think we just need to look for the answers that God has for us. And that's why I laid out so many answers in, from the Scriptures in this book, because they may or may not apply to every person. Some of them, I think, are very universal to every individual, but some may or may not be part of your journey. But we all are going through our own journey, and it's, a, it's wrong for us to say, well, he's, he's, I've not gone through anything like he has. I hear that all the time, and I, while I appreciate the sentiment, the fact mm-hmm. is, it doesn't really matter that you haven't gone through what I have, because there are many people who have gone through a lot worse than what I have. Mm-hmm. But for you, but for you or for me, when we are in the middle of our trials, the middle of our tragedy, our suffering, and the trauma that comes with it, it is real to us. It can be devastating to us, and it doesn't matter how badly it, it how it compares to other people, because to you, it's where you're at in life. It's mm-hmm. where, where God has you. Well, you said that you feel like some of the answers are kind of universal, so why don't you share one of those with us? I think the biggest one, and there are many, the book is divided into three parts. I talk about some of the general things in the first part, general thoughts about suffering. I talk about the second part, the causes of our suffering, and they are. I think they're important to know because our, there are many things that can cause our suffering, and some of them we can do something about, some of them we can't. Mm-hmm. For example, one of, the, one of the causes of our suffering is my own stupidity and <laughs> foolishness, my own sinfulness. And mm-hmm. if I find out that I've done something that caused my own suffering, I need to make that right. I need to repent yeah. and get right. Yeah. But one of the universal ones is really the last chapter in the book. Uh, it's that God always, I believe God always uses our suffering to draw our attention back to Him, mm-hmm. uh, no matter what it is in our suffering. One of the passages that did more for me than any other passage as we were going through this, what I've discovered, um, Lamentations chapter 3, mm-hmm. as Jeremiah writes in his, in, in his writing, in that beginning of the chapter, first 20 verses, uh, he writes about, obviously, extreme suffering that he's going through in his life, it, basically because of his, the, nation, the state of his nation, uh, Israel, uh, and he writes about his suffering. But then he gets down to verse 21, he says, This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Mm-hmm. Great is your faithfulness. Mm-hmm. I believe, in, in Jeremiah, as Jeremiah writes this, uh, he says, This I call to mind, now I remember. That's what he's saying, mm-hmm. now I remember. I, going through all this suffering, re- recounting it for myself, I remember something now, that, and I have hope in what I remember, that his love never ceases. His mercies never come to him. They are new every morning. So 
so I think one of the purposes that's universal to everyone, when we're, and I believe this is for those who are lost, and those who are, are Christians, when you're going through suffering, God wants to draw your attention to Him mm-hmm. through your suffering. He wants us to turn to Him. That's where we find answers. That's where we find comfort and hope is in Him and nowhere else. Many times the suffering we go through is at the hand of other people. So I can imagine that the issue of uh, forgiveness came up with, oh, yeah. with that. So uh, why don't you tell us how you feel that that's the responsibility of every person to forgive? I believe it, I believe it is. Our world really turned upside down when we found out that my brother and his wife had been killed by their own 12-year-old son. Mm. Uh, he, he went just... We don't know why, but one day he picked up a gun and started shooting and killed his mother, killed his father, shot his little brother twice, and tried to kill his sister with a knife. Um, Five days after that event on March 1st, 2011, when that happened, five days later, on March 6th, I knew in my heart uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me that I needed to go visit my nephew. Mm. And I didn't want to, but I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, just days before he had killed my brother, but I I went to visit him, and I, I had a struggle like a spiritual struggle in my heart like I'd never felt before. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted justice to be done. I mean, I wanted him to really pay for what he had done. But when we got done with our 15-minute visit, I stood up and I gave that kid a hug. Mm. And it was a hard, hard thing to do. But I hugged him and I said, look, I'm still your uncle. And if you ever need me, reach out, find me. I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can for you. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that making that step, mm-hmm. and the reason I think I need I know now the reason I went had to go visit him was not for him as much as it was for me. Sure, I needed to take that step so that I would get to the place several months later where I could forgive him. Mm-hmm. Because when we hold on to anger and bitterness, and I think I, I realized finally a few days later, had I hung on to the anger and the desire for retribution or the desire for him to be punished to the full extent of the law. If I'd have hung on to all of that, that hatred, that anger, bitterness, it would have only destroyed me. Right. And it would, it would have prevented me and my family mm. from recovering from that, that tragedy. And, but because of the Lord allowed me or gave me the, the desire and the ability to go show a little bit of care and concern to this kid who mm-hmm. had just killed his parents, I was able to get to the place later where I could completely let go of all that hatred, all that anger, and all that bitterness and mm. truly forgive him. And I believe that's why our family has been was able to recover fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was years, but but within three years we were living fairly normal life. I mean, it, the kids were out of counseling; they were doing well, and they're doing so good now. It's it's almost unbelievable. If you didn't know what happened to them for thirteen years ago, you would never know it by talking to them. Wow. Uh, they're just such good kids. The Lord's really blessed. Well, yes. Praise God for his healing uh, emotionally yes. as, as much as physically. Um, so yes. with just a short time left, uh, what advice would you uh, give to somebody who is going through suffering a loss right now? I, I would say, well, for one, I would say get the book because the book consolidates the, the biblical answers. I mean, mm-hmm. the, we find them in the scriptures, but if you don't know where to search in the scriptures, buy my book, then you can, there are so many scriptures in there that would point to you to places to read and study and, and meditate on to find the answers that God has for you. But, but know this, that there are answers, that there are causes, there are th- something that caused our suffering, and that there are purposes. God never lets a tragedy in your life go to waste. Mm-hmm. He will use it some way. It'll take whatever ugly, he'll make it beautiful. He'll take whatever's tragic, and he'll bring victory out of it. He can do that. He's done it for countless people over the years. He's done it for me, and he will do it for you as well. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is you're going through, look to him, find the answers, and allow him to, to do what he wants to do through your suffering in your life. Mm. Tell our listeners how they can uh, find out more about how to get a copy of your book. Absolutely. Uh, they could go to my website, wallylong.com. Uh, that's very easy to find. You can buy the book on Amazon as well. You can contact me on the website if anybody would like me to come speak about this topic at their church or other group of some type. I'd be happy to do that, make arrangements to do that. Uh, they can contact me through the website. So one more time, the book today is Why Me, Lord? Biblical and Practical Answers for Suffering in Our Lives, written by Wally Long and published by Westbow Press, a division of Thomas Nelson and Zondervan. And we so much appreciate receiving a copy of this book. And Wally, it's been a real pleasure talking with you and appreciate your insight. It has been an honor to be on the show. Thank you so much, Roberta. 
And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. And if you would like to hear this interview again, you can find it on your favorite podcast platform or through KNEO.org. This is Roberta Foster on the Author's Corner. Join me again next time.